Hello everybody, this is Dr. David Cole. It's Monday afternoon, October 14th. Uh, it's the first day of class for the fall term of the, the second eight week schedule. So this will be the announcement for week one for Political Science 1013, fall 24 on the second eight week schedule. Everyone, I will try to get one of these video announcements out weekly. We're starting the term on a Monday, of course. Generally, they will go out on Sunday. So look for another one six days from now. Uh, I wanted to, to talk about the course in general today and what we are doing for the first week or two coming up to the first exam on Friday, October 25th. Now, this is an eight-week term. Exams come up quickly every 10, 12, 14 days. We've got to get in four of them. Okay. Let me say just a word about the course requirements. Quite a number of emails have gone out. And every, everybody, these emails, if you should somehow miss one, every, just about everything I send out by email also will go up on the course website as an announcement. So you can look for it in either place in your inbox or on the course website under announcements. Uh, everyone should have a syllabus. The syllabus is up on the course website under Course Home. I sent out two announcements. I sent the syllabus out and then found I had to make a correction. So you'll see an announcement that says corrected syllabus. That's the one you should use and it is up on the course website now. We have four 100 point exams coming up every, every couple of weeks roughly, 12 days or so. Um, we have five discussions, the, dis the threaded discussions each count 25 points. I'll count the best four out of five, so that makes up a 100 point grade like an exam. Okay, so you're graded on the basis of 500 points, 90, 80, 70, 60, 450 for an A, 400 for a B, 350 for a C, and so forth. The minim minimum passing grade is 300 out of 500. Uh, there will be some extra credit opportunities. I've gotten one of those out already to introduce yourself. You may also write a term paper. It's not required, <coughs> but if you write a term paper, it gives you a chance to raise a low exam grade from earlier in the term. Because uh, <coughs> if you write a term paper, the lowest exam grade will be dropped. Please notice, you have to notify me of your topic in advance of turning in the term paper. I generally like to do that two weeks in advance of the due date, but we're running up against Thanksgiving this term. So for this term, you must notify me of your topic by December 2nd, which will be the Monday we come back to school after Thanksgiving. And the paper itself is due on the 12th, I believe we have the final exam scheduled for the 14th. Okay, everybody, your, your inbox should be full of emails. Let me advise you, please, if you could, please read through those emails as carefully as you can. Some of them are lengthy and some of them are quite short. Okay. It's to get the course off on a sound footing. Questions that students have should be answered in these emails such as how long does the term paper have to be? Okay, 10 to 12 pages as a rule of thumb. Uh, eight pages might be okay, but that's a rule of thumb. That's discussed in a document that I sent out, and I also uh, put an excerpt from that document in the email. Now, everyone, you have a textbook which you can purchase, or the assigned chapters from the textbook are linked up on the website, the electronic version. So you may purchase a hard copy of a textbook, you do not have to. Um, for the discussions and for the exams, for the exams you have textbook assignments, but the exams in the main are based on my class notes. Okay, those are up on the course website. They are PowerPoint presentations that have been converted into PDFs. In other words, this is what I would say day to day in class the basis for my lectures if I were lecturing to you in a conventional 
classroom format instead of online. So the exams are based largely on those class notes. Plus, for the exams and for the discussions, you will receive links to articles you are to read. We use the whole internet as a textbook here. Now, my advice would be to try those links as soon as you receive the announcement. Don't wait till the last minute. Everybody, it's hard to escape using the New York Times and the Washington Post. Notice also you received an announcement about the Wall Street Journal. Our library subscribes to the Wall Street Journal, so if I assign you something from the Wall Street Journal, you should be able to access that easily. Just follow the instructions in that announcement. Now, the thing about it is, everybody, many of these publications uh, put up paywalls. For the New York Times and the Washington Post, to the best of my knowledge, the policy is they allow people a limited number of page views before the paywall comes up. Okay. Listen very carefully. If for some reason you have trouble getting that link to come up, or if it asks you to pay, contact me. You should not have to pay for any of this. I don't expect you to do that. If you run into a paywall or other problems, I will get the text of the material cut and pasted and off to you. Okay, so we'll see about that. Okay. But my advice would be not to wait till the last minute on this. Okay, check those links as soon as you receive them. All right, so that in a nutshell uh, is a summary of the course requirements. Um, going forward, what we have for the first part of the court, for the first part of the course here, we'll have an exam coming up on the 25th that will cover units one and two. Okay, unit one on political participation, unit two on political parties and press groups. I'll have a bit more to say about unit two next week in the announcement that will go out this weekend on Sunday. Okay. We have a discussion this Friday and Saturday. Everybody with eight weeks. Sometimes we've got to do things on Friday and Saturday. I try to avoid doing things on Sunday, but we've got to get our first discussion in, and I want to get it in about a week before the exam. So we will do that this coming Friday and Saturday. I believe that's the 18th and 19th. Okay. You need to post twice to the discussion to give full credit. Okay. Post initially, then respond to one of your classmates over a period of 48 hours. We run all the discussions that way. So we'll have a discussion coming up this Friday and Saturday, and then the following Friday we'll have our first exam. For the exam, you have an article about the attitudes of young women these days and young men. And you have an article about the election overall and the differences between the two parties and what's at stake. Finally, you have an article to read about pressure group activity by the tech companies. So that's a total of four links. I would advise you to try those links as soon as possible. So we have a discussion coming up this weekend, and then the following Friday the 25th will be our first exam. All right, let me say just a few words about Unit 1, and then we'll discuss Unit 2 next time. Unit 1 is called Political Participation. I begin by saying a few words about the concept of democracy in general. And everybody, the third page, the third slide, okay, you notice I, I took my remarks from that part of the class notes and put them in an email to you. That's important. I hope you will take a couple of minutes to take a look at that. Um, we, uh, democracy is a fraught concept. There's disagreement about what it, what it means, although most people are for it and may not have much idea of what it is. Okay. So we try to address the concept of democracy right at the beginning. Then we discuss different ways in which you can participate. You could donate money to a candidate or a party or a pressure group. You could put up a yard sign or wear a button or put a bumper sticker on your car. You could attend public meetings. You could, uh, <coughs> run, you could run for office yourself. Some of you may do that someday. I don't know. Um, and then, of course, there's voting. Okay. Uh, all those ways of taking, a, taking part, we'd say, are working within the system or conventional.
intentional participation. But then people sometimes become frustrated or feel that things are there's something that's very urgent and they push the boundaries of the system and take part in unconventional ways which uh, by and large refer to protests. Okay? There have been any number of protests. Some of the big prestige campuses on the east and west coasts have been up in arms over the past year or so over the conflict between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Students may have heard something about this. That's one example, recent example, of political protest. Another might have taken place back on January 6, 2021, in the aftermath of the election. Some people believe that former President Trump was culpable for what happened. He was impeached, but he was not convicted. And there's an ongoing prosecution of him that will not go forward until after the election, if at all. Okay. So we raise the question of why people might be moved to take part in such things. You might say, <coughs> There's always the danger of violence, even when people intend to protest to be peaceful. All right. Well, at that point, we break it off for the second half of that set of class notes. We hone in on voting in elections, because that's the way our public officials are chosen. The thing about it is voting by itself is sort of a passive way of taking part in the political system. If you don't do anything else, you may not gain all that much influence over the system just by voting. <coughs> so we find that many people vote and many people do not. When election time comes, we may be interested in, in who's likely to win, but there are two questions to think about. You know, as, we, as you read through the discussion of voting in elections, notice we raise the question of vote choice, is how do people decide who to vote for? But the thing about it is, some people vote and some people do not. Okay. Those who vote may not be representative of everybody if many people vote and many others do not. So we have the question of turnout and vote choice, and those are two separate questions. <coughs> now everybody, we used to think that poor people with fewer years of education were less likely to vote, and affluent people were more likely. There still may be something to that, but the Trump phenomenon has sort of uh, thrown that up in the air because Trump goes after a fair number of what we call low propensity voters. That is, people without much propensity to vote who might otherwise uh, blow it off and not vote at all. Okay. Even though he is a Republican and that party traditionally has pursued more affluent voters. It's one of the big changes in the system that Trump has brought along. So look carefully at what we say about elections in general and then the issue of turnout before we get to vote choice because we try to address both of those issues in that set of class notes. Okay, everybody, that's enough for me from today, I think. Please, please, please look at those emails you have received as closely as you can. The links for the exam and the discussion, please go ahead and try those links and contact me if you cannot get the articles to come up. All right, please do that right away and don't wait till the last minute. Um, and we'll be talking to you once again uh, this coming Sunday for our announcement for week two. So study hard, take it easy. Contact me with any issues, questions, or problems. You have a five point extra credit opportunity. That can be emailed to me through the course website or to david.cole at opsu.edu. Thanks a lot, and we'll be talking to you again in six days' time.